All right, guys, so today I'm gonna to talk about something probably on your mind, the Black Plague. There's some other names for the Black Plague. You have Black Death, the Great Plague, or Bubonic Plague. They're all the same thing. There's some real interesting new findings that relate to nutrition that I wanna bring up. Now, the Black Plague or Black Death was the second pandemic event that occurred in the year 1340 through the 1400s. Now, if you look in the history books, this event was caused by bacteria infecting fleas, which then was spread by rats okay, throughout Europe and even Asia. However, recently there was 25 skeletons which were victims for, of the Black Plague in a London cemetery. Here's what they found. The bones of all 25 victims showed signs of rickets. What is rickets? That is a severe vitamin D deficiency. Now, what's the relationship between vitamin D and the Black Plague or an infection? Well, vitamin D is not really a vitamin. It's a hormone. It's one of the most powerful immune modulators. It regulates the immune system. And if you're deficient, it's going to make you highly susceptible to infections, bacterial infections, viral infections, systemic infections, septicemia, and autoimmune diseases. In fact, you will nearly always find a vitamin D deficiency in someone with an autoimmune condition. All right, so number one, they found a vitamin D deficiency. Also, the bone showed other signs of malnutrition and signs of injuries. Now, what's interesting about this is it relates to another video I did about the Spanish flu which occurred in 1918. And if you haven't seen that video, I put a link down below. And the reason why that's significant is there were 50 million people who died in the Spanish flu. And there was about 50 million people that died in this black plague, okay? Because it was a pandemic event. And my question is, how could just a virus spread through the entire world and just kill that many people? It just doesn't make sense. What came just before the event? What came right before the Spanish flu? And what came before the Black Plague? So with the Spanish flu, you had this World War I, which occurred just before the event, which you had huge shifts in the transport of food. You have the canning of food, which led to nutritional deficiencies. When you can food, you decrease the zinc by 85%. And with the Spanish flu, it peaked in January which is the time of the year where you have the lowest amount of vitamin D exposure from the sun of the entire year, which is interesting. So what happened with the Spanish flu is we have this malnutrition, vitamin D deficiency, a war situation, and then you get this infection. Well, with the Black Plague, signs of injury. Well, that sounds like a war to me. Uh, now, why would they have low vitamin D and malnutrition? Now, there's some other interesting points. In 1315, there was an eruption of a volcano, okay, Mount Tarawera, and the ashes from this event may have affected the temperature around the globe. You can look this up. And precipitated the Great Famine of 1315 to 1317. Other references say it's 1315 to 1322. But there was a famine. Interesting. So now we have malnutrition. And if you're having ashes that could potentially affect the temperature, you're going to have low vitamin D levels because it's going to act as a barrier. Most of Europe was affected. This famine apparently was caused by bad weather, probably from this event, and then you had crop failure. So you have all these things that are just stacking up to set people up for a very low immune system. Now, what's interesting is that some people think that the bubonic plague was way in the past. It doesn't happen right now. It does happen very rarely, but it still can happen. In fact, seven people in the U.S. every single year, get the bubonic plague. Now, one more interesting point about this that may relate to this or the topic we're talking about, but the California brown shrimp were fed a diet without vitamin C. And within six weeks, they developed black lesions. Now, with the black death or black plague or bubonic plague, what happens, you're getting necrosis of the tissue very similar to gangrene, and the tissue is turning black. That's why they call it the black plague. Well, apparently, when you starve shrimp, vitamin C, they develop black lesions, and they call it the black death disease. 
and the bacterial counts go way up and they get septicemia, which is a severe infection. Now, the reason why I wanted to bring up this whole point is to show you the relationship between severe infections and vitamin deficiencies, especially vitamin D, especially during the winter months. To protect yourself against viruses, you really wanna make sure you get enough vitamin D. Now, it's very difficult to get it from food, if, if not impossible, and it's equally difficult to get it during the winter months, so you're gonna to have to take it in a supplement form. And lastly, just to summarize the main point, the Black Plague and the Spanish Flu are perfect examples of how a nutritional deficiency could potentially set you up for a serious infection. All right, thanks for watching. Hey, if you're liking this content, please subscribe now and I will actually keep you updated on future videos.